joining us today, we're here with Jeff from JMAG. Janet and I love working with JMAG. They have great product around the world from contracts and relationships with some of the most amazing hotels, as well as their private collection of villas is incredible. And uh, we also have luxury Cayman Villas here, and uh, I'll let Jeff uh, do those introductions. Thanks, Angie. Appreciate it. Hi, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining today. Appreciate it. So um, I'm with JMAC Hospitality, and what we do is um, we work closely with luxury travel advisors throughout the country, like uh, the folks at Boutique Travel Advisors. And um, we effectively curate a collection of independent hotels, villas, private jet companies, um, and other travel related services and kind of connect the two together. So, you know, through us and, and through your travel advisor, um, as part of the signature network, we're able to, um, you know, give extra benefits and amenities um, specific to the signature travel network for any of our partners um, that are members. And in addition, we have our own program that um, any travel advisor can have access to, um, and they all benefit you with additional amenities, special experiences, um, and that's all kind of depending upon how each one of our partnerships works. They give us uh, various extras and um, value added services for you. So um, today with me, we have Sanam from Luxury Cayman Villas, one of our partners. Um, and so we're gonna have her get into some more specifics of, of their properties, their villas. And then um, when she's finished, I'm gonna tell you about some, um, just give you a brief overview on some of our other partners that we work with. Great, thanks so much, Jeff. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about Luxury Cayman Villas and what life in Grand Cayman is like during this pandemic. Uh, we have a wonderful portfolio of villas throughout the island of Grand Cayman, and they vary in size, style, um, decor, and just location as well. And there's something for everybody in our portfolio. So I'm really excited to kind of take this deeper dive into both our portfolio and what day-to-day -day life is like here on island. So we're, so we're so happy to have you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to, to share this information with you. Um, one of the first villas, I'll, I'll kind of dive into some of the properties that a lot of the families that come down to Island really love. They're some of our showstoppers and really highlight what the portfolio has to offer to um, clients and guests alike. So Point of View, for example, is one of our, our top villas. It is a six bedroom, six and a half bathroom villa. It is a stunning property in a really nice location. It's a neighborhood called South Sound, which is one of the upscale neighborhoods of the island. And it's still very close to Seven Mile Beach. It's close to all the restaurants and shops, the bars. Um, so really close access to everything, being in a central location, but you still have the privacy and tranquility of a beachfront villa. Um, and this villa, it really, it has a decor that speaks to a lot of people, of course. The villa has two master suites and it also has an ensuite for every single bath, for every single bedroom. And there's a fantastic bunk room that really caters to families and kids and teenagers that are traveling together. This it looks villa, magnificent. It is, it is one of my favorite ones for sure. <laughs> and this is actually a smart home. So you have Apple TVs throughout the house. There are iPads um, in every room, Sonos sound system throughout the house, great Wi-Fi, all the, the comforts of home essentially while being on an island. And as you can see, we have a wonderful um, show kitchen in this house. So great for private chef services to come in. Um, if you wanna do a cooking class with a chef, we can arrange that through our concierge team. This property is just magnificent really. Um, and this still actually has a wonderful pool that runs the length of the house. And there are two fire pits outside. It has two hot tubs, uh, a great dock. At the end of the dock, there's also a sound system. So I mean, really you can spend all your afternoons watching the sunset out there and then this is a great example of uh, a rec room or a room that you find in most of our villas where it really is a space for kids to kind of hang out it's really representative of of the spaces that adults like to hang out in the villas that we have um, if they want to watch the game have some drinks etc so there's really spaces for everybody uh, in mind at our properties so another villa we have is called evolution and this one is a seven bedroom villa with seven and a half baths. And it was actually created with the mindset of um, multi-generational families coming in. So the beauty of this house is every single bedroom, all seven of them, walk out onto this wonderful pool deck and beach access. So you have ocean views really 
spectacular ocean views from every single room in that house. Um, and it's located in a little town called Bodden Town. It's on the southern coast of the island and it's pretty central. It's close to everything from the airport to different attractions and different parts of the island. And it also has a really nice private dock. Um, and this will actually has some of the best snorkeling in my opinion. Um, plenty to see right off, off that dock right there. This Those views are amazing. <laughs> yeah, and then this is one of the master bedrooms for example. Um, and this villa actually has two as well. So amazing views as you can see from your own bathtub, from your bed bedroom. Um, and it's great if you have a multi-generational family or if you have grandma and grandpa staying with you um, or adult children who kind of have, want their own space, you can kind of spread out throughout the house, which is always um, a nice little treat sometimes when you're traveling with loved ones. And just plenty of open spaces to kind of come together again as a family, to dine, um, come around food and, and, and the pool area as well. So that you easily walk out to the grill. We also have outdoor kitchens and um, barbecues on all of our properties as well. So really that indoor outdoor living. Um, and is this a swimmable beach? Yes, so this beach actually, as you may have seen in one of the prior photos, um, I can actually just quickly go back. So the dock, it has a wonderful stretch of white sand but then it is quite rocky to get in. So for example, this villa actually has the dock built for that purpose with stairs at the end so that you can easily walk, walk into the water and enter the water from the end of the dock while bypassing all of the rocks. So once you go into the water, it is swimmable, it's quite clear. Mm -hmm. um, and if you swim out a little bit, there's quite, quite wonderful marine life. Um, and where the waves are breaking, there's a reef. So it's, it's very protected, it's very calm, um, calm waters, but to say that you can easily just walk from the sand right in, it's not the easiest. If you wear water shoes, absolutely. Um, but this dog these, actually, are things, these are all things that we can consider when we're planning a trip because it really depends on what the priority is for the family, right? If the priority is to have the best accommodation versus to have the best swimmable beach versus to have a dock versus to have be able to snorkel right offshore. Yeah. I mean, all of those things are things that you need to consider that a lot of people might not even necessarily know to ask. So these are all questions that we would ask and get a good sense of, hey, this is why this property is the right fit for this particular family or group. And it right. doesn't preclude you from going to the larger main beaches. There's just, you know, the trade-offs is that you get to come back and retreat to really a luxury beach right out, right out your um, back door. And I love that you have the docking. That can be an added bonus or if a property has, you know, is equipped with kayaks and, and certainly whether you pack your snorkel gear or it's provided, just having that access right outside your front door and the level of privacy, it's a great trade off. And you can always plan those full days at the main beach if you, if you prefer that for a way to mix up your itinerary. Absolutely, and, and I'm actually happy you mentioned it, but all of our villas, they do have paddle boards and kayaks as well on site. So those are available for you to use throughout your stay. Um, this one is actually a great example because like you mentioned, the beach may not be the ideal beach, but it's just, they've added that dock specifically for that reason. So that, you know, if, if the beach is still a very important feature for a guest, they have all the luxuries of the home and the home might cater to exactly what they're looking for, but it doesn't stop them from also having that wonderful beach access by, by way of the dock. Um, this one actually has a sound system at the end, but it also has this wonderful catamaran net that you can kind of lie in and watch the sunset from, which is really awesome. It's, you can't see it in the photo, but it's just at the end of the dock. So that's a really neat feature of this house as well. And this is a great example of one of the bunk rooms. Uh, this villa also has a wonderful bunk room and it has a little area for, for kids and teenagers to hang out. I will say a lot of adults also love to hang out in these rooms. There's an Xbox system in place um, and different activities and games throughout the house to really promote. As much as we have technology throughout all of our villas in our portfolio, we also really like to promote that one-on-one -on -one time um, with your family and friends when staying on site. So there's games, there's books, um, as well as, for example, gaming consoles, et cetera. So, and it's so easy to take those things for granted, but you know, that you may or may not find in a hotel. And I know we travel a lot of times and, and we do prefer, you know, the privacy of a villa and we've traveled with other families and these kids, whether there's four or five of them, these hangout rooms are so fantastic because they, it's their vacation too. And they want sleepovers. 
And those are the all be in the same yeah. room. So to have these, uh, you know, configurations, it's so fantastic to create more memories and and experiences and fun. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, this is an, another one of um, the villas that our guests absolutely love. It's called Sun Salutations, and it's located out in the Rum Point area of Grand Cayman. So it's kind of on the northern end of things. It's it's um, it's a six bedroom, multi generational. Uh, villa that's great for families as well five and a half baths and this one really it's a showstopper from the minute you walk through that front door uh, you actually have three three sides all filled with windows floor to ceiling windows and you just are taking in that stunning ocean view from the minute you step into this villa it has a lot of large open spaces it's perfect for families and really just a spectacular view over the pool and the beach this one also has two master bedrooms, each one with their own private ensuite, but they do share a balcony overlooking the ocean. So as you can see, like spectacular views again, right from your bedroom. And we have a question from Kathy. What was the name of the first villa again, the six bedroom the, one? She the first one was called Point of View. Okay, perfect. And this is magnificent. That's a gorgeous oh beachfront. I mean, that's great for kids of all ages. The little ones have- And this one actually, the beach here beach. is so shallow that you can walk out quite far. It's it's a wow. wonderful beach for little kids um, or even adults just waiting in the water, having drinks in the afternoon, watching the sunset. Um, it's extremely calm at all times. So it's, it's really a stunning property and plenty of space around the pool. So for dining, for lounging, um, it, it really, there's a lot of space in the outdoors um, to kind of hang out and spend time together. And I so just, have travelers. Sorry, I just have a quick question. Um, you know, what is kind of for seasonality? Obviously, there's high season, low season, there's festive. Tell us a little bit about the seasonality for these properties and the island in sure. general. So, in general, um, most of our travelers come through the USA. Uh, most of our guests are from the US. And I would say majority of travel begins uh, right before Thanksgiving, US Thanksgiving. Uh, and I would say pretty much as it starts to get colder from then on, it's quite busy on island. Um, the weather is wonderful from Christmas onwards. It's always calm. It's a little bit cooler for people that live on island, but it's the perfect weather where you're not in sweltering heat throughout the day. Um, you know, great to be outdoors doing activities in the pool and the beach. So we do get quite a bit of travelers coming in basically from beginning of December onwards. And March is one of the busiest times on island, I would say, throughout the entire month due to the various March breaks and spring breaks, et cetera. So things start to taper off a little bit during um, right after Easter weekend. And then the months of June and July and mid up till mid-August is quite busy on island as well. And I was going to kind of ask and inquire, are you seeing more extended rentals, particularly for summer 2021, where people can rent for an entire month, six weeks, three weeks? Are you seeing extended stay just given, you know, it is more challenging to travel right now. And I think we have more flexibility. We've sort of moved uh, as far as, you know, people who are used to going in and out of the office. We're seeing a lot of more in, uh, virtual employment. <laughs> yes. So for 2021, we're actually, um, I will say over the winter months, we are getting a lot of the long-term stays. So we've had quite a few that are staying for three weeks, some that are staying up to four months. Um, and that's also in part due to the program that Department of Tourism for the Cayman Islands has launched, which I'll tell you guys a little bit about in, a, in, in just a moment, um, which really caters to those who work from home. Um, if they have kids, they're studying from on like online courses and they're studying from home as well. So really just allowing for those people that have the ability to to move around and work from remote locations to do so from the Cayman Islands. So we are getting those longer duration stays. And I'll, I'll say actually most of them are coming in for the winter months where people are trying to get away from the cold. So yeah, we're getting a lot of those inquiries and saying, you know, if we're going to make this a six week journey, what's the best location? The Cayman Islands. <laughs> I agree. Why not? Um, so I'll share one more property. It's actually in the same area as Sun Salutations. This is called the Rum Point Club Residences. And this is a really exciting property for us because it's the first luxury hotel style accommodation on this side of the island. And Luxury Cayman Villas is the exclusive rental agent for this property. So every single room in this, in this property is oceanfront as well. There's only 34 of them. 
um, but they range from one to four bedrooms. And we also have penthouses as well, which are three or four bedrooms. And they all have these sweeping ocean views. You have a full kitchen, state-of-the-art appliances, um, and spa, fitness center on site, food and beverage on site, as well as water sports. And you can even have your guests arrive by boat once they get off, off the plane. So really, it's like a new, fresh look um, and take on luxury on the other side of the island where you don't really have any, any products like this. So aside from Seven Mile Beach, you now have From Point Club Residences, which has just opened and it, it so far everyone is loving it. Who does this one cater to? Is this more family friendly, adults, couples? It would be really for any of them. Um, there are units that are family friendly. It's also a wonderful property for just adults who are traveling together where if they don't want bunk rooms and whatnot, it still has a very um, elegant, modern and elevated feel to it. And I would say it's maybe not as maybe not as kid friendly as some of our villas, um, but you still have units that have bunk rooms as well. So it actually has rooms that cater to anybody. It's, it's a great property if you're going for just a couple's vacation, if they're, for example, all adults that are traveling together, we have rooms for, for those groups as well. But there are also rooms that cater to families. I will say as a destination, uh, the Cayman Islands are actually very family friendly. And many of the people that come to Ireland end up becoming travelers that come back over time, years and years and years. And you'll meet many people who have been coming since they were kids. Um, and it's now where they bring their families, for example. So I would say as a destination, we are very family friendly. And I'll just do a little highlight on our brand new property that's coming online um, first quarter next year. So this is called Black Urchin, and it's located in Pease Bay. It's actually being developed as an exclusive beachfront luxury residential property and will also be managed by Luxury Cayman Villas. So it's actually a bespoke micro resort, and it's going to be a wonderful property that kind of takes in hotel style services. Um, it's going to have housekeeping on site, on site concierge, private catering services, and essentially, it's going to be compromised, um, made up of a, a number of villas all on the same property. So a great place for boutique weddings where you can do a buyout for a group. Um, if it's, I don't know, a family reunion going on and they just want complete privacy and have the whole property to themselves, you could easily do a buyout. Uh, so this is a really exciting addition to our portfolio that's going to be coming online early, early quarter one <laughs> next year. So. Uh, but with that, I really want to go into the Global Citizen Concierge Program. This is this has been launched by the Cayman Islands Department of Tourism, and it's really catering to those who want to work remotely from the Cayman Islands, and they want to come to Ireland with their family, stay here. They can essentially stay anywhere from 90 days up to two years if they wanted to, and pretty much live as a resident would. Um, I'm currently in the Cayman Islands and I've been here throughout the entire pandemic. So just from firsthand experience, I can tell you that life here is pretty much back to normal for the most part. We're like this little COVID free bubble in the middle of the Caribbean. Um, you know, you can go to grocery stores without having to wear a mask, you can go to restaurants, bars, go diving, go um, on boat charters and go for brunch or go to the spa. And really life has resumed for the most part back to normal. And because we've been able to contain um, the safety of the community here so well, thanks to the government. Uh, they've, they're quite particular with how they're letting people into the island. So as of October 1, the borders of the Cayman Islands were opened and it was really a phased reopening. So for example, the month of October, only 800 people were allowed to come in. And with the phased reopening, uh, there is a mandatory quarantine period right now, which is about 14 nights. And it's in place for anybody who's coming into Ireland, all inbound travelers to the destinations. And it's allowing the government and public health to basically monitor that and make sure that the community is kept safe. And also those who finish their quarantine, once they're, you know, they've, they've tested negative and are free to kind of wander around the island and, and live it and experience it as they normally would, making sure that they're also safe and, you know, they can feel comfortable going to a restaurant with their family and their kids and not having to socially distance and, and wear a mask, et cetera. So it's really for the safety of everybody coming into the destination. Um, and with this program, it's basically allowing those who have the final financial independence to live and work remotely in the Cayman Islands for up to two years. 
And I do have quite a bit of information on the requirements. I can just kind of gloss over them. Um, and if anybody is interested in it, we can always send the information to them um, so you can share it with any clients who may be interested in this. This is all just fantastic information. It's so helpful. And I think, you know, at some point the pandemic will be over, but I think that there's going to be real changes in the way that people live and work. And I think that for a lot of us and people who can re work remotely, I think these types of experiences are going to become more and more popular. As people have flexibility and can work from anywhere, I think people are going to be seeking out these types of experiences. So I don't necessarily think that it's only for the pandemic. I think this might be a long-term trend. Absolutely. And the beauty of the Cayman Islands is, you know, it it comes off as a little bit more of an upscale destination maybe for, for, for some coming to the Caribbean. But Really, it's a very safe. It's a very safe island. There's security not only in um, the ability to go out and in the evenings, on weekends, going into all parts of the island without having to feel unsafe being in certain areas. But it's also the infrastructure. It's the having secure Wi-Fi and electricity, and not having to worry about the power going out throughout the day multiple times during the week. These are all little things that you know sometimes we take for granted, but. Quite honestly, life in the Caribbean, you never really know. You're not really attached to mainland, essentially. So th there are little things that we take for granted. But even just the ability to, to use the US dollar anywhere you go, you can use your credit card or debit card, even at the fish shack on the beach, um, on the most remote side of the island. So really, there's a lot of safety and security when it comes to that and just ease of living. Wonderful, ho wonderful hospitals throughout the island. Um, with grade A service. So there's just so many things that, you know, even coming down as someone who, for example, is a U.S. citizen, it's very comfortable to make that switch and have peace of mind when you're coming down with your family. So the approval criteria is a little bit uh, robust, as it may seem at first. There is an application process for anyone who wants to come under into the island under this Global Citizen Concierge Program. Um, and the first part of the of the process is that the applicant must be financially dependent. So independent, sorry, not dependent. Um, so the applicant, depending on how many people are coming in, if it's just the applicant themselves, they need to make a minimum income of US $100,000 annually. If they're coming in with a spouse or civil partner, then there's a minimum income of 150,000 that's required. And if they're coming in with a civil partner or spouse, as well as dependents, then it goes up to 180,000. And that stays the same, even if it's just the applicant coming in with dependents, such as their children or, or any other dependents under them. So, and that's just to make sure that they can take care of themselves, they can pay for their accommodation, they can pay for, you know, their day-to-day -day expenses and making sure that they're coming in with a job already out from, from before. So they're not getting hired to work on island. They're coming in working remotely. Um, and then with that, the other application criteria is really just proof of legal existence for where they're working, a bank reference, proof of identity. And I won't really go into too much detail with these. Most of them are pretty standard. As well as can stay, people can stay with this program for up to two years, correct? Yes. So it's pretty much you're doing this one time application and you can easily come in and out of the Cayman Islands. You know, even after, say, say the pandemic eases down in the next year or so, but you can easily come through, come back and forth onto island with your family um, or even just yourself as, a, as an applicant coming back and forth. Um, so it's really wonderful in that sense. How long is the application process? I mean, how long does it typically take to as, be approved? As of right now, it's between 14 to 16 days on average. The beauty of it is um, they're working at streamlining it more. It does go through a lot of different uh, government departments. So it's a work in progress, but the beauty of it is that they actually have a concierge team that is specifically um, catering to applicants alone. So they're actually from the Department of Tourism. They're wonderful individuals that really know the program inside and out, and they're the ones who are helping the applicants complete everything. So if you have a guest, for example, who wants to apply for this, as an agent or even as myself from Luxury Cayman Villas, I don't have to be the one who's helping that guest apply for this. We just kind of put them in touch with, either lead them to the website or put them in touch with the, uh, the application website. And from there, this concierge team takes over and handles everything that this guest needs to take care of in order to get themselves to Island and get approved.
Um, and I'll just, just kind of glance over uh, the dependence piece as well. So the government here has basically defined a dependent as a spouse or civil partner um, of the applicant or somebody like a child, stepchild, adopted kids, uh, grandparents, et cetera, who would pretty much be classified as a dependent. That does not include caregivers, nannies, if somebody has um, a housekeeper, for example, or a private chef that's coming down with them, those would not be included as dependents. And with dependents as well, they're basically required to have the same information as the applicant for their for their application process, but um, not quite as robust. So we just need to know their proof of identity, so passport photo, for example, passport page, evidence of marital status, if, if they are coming down under that. Um, if the dependent is a child, then they would just be required to provide birth certificates or adoption orders, police clearance as well for anyone coming down, and proof of health insurance as well. So actually, that's an important fact I should mention. Um, for anybody coming under this program, you are required to come in with health insurance for at least 30 days um, upon arrival to the Cayman Islands. And after you're on island, you are required to have uh, local health insurance coverage within those 30 days coming and in. then for travelers who are just regular travelers because obviously this global citizen concierge program is really for a select few people right. but lots and lots of visitors come and visit the Cayman Islands and the Caribbean in general what is the requirement for health insurance has that been imposed yet to have to require health travel insurance to enter that's, the Cayman that's Islands? a great question so right now to be honest uh, this program is really for those coming in in the in the coming months, it's more for the short term. Um, and while the pandemic is still kind of at its peak as it is in most of the larger cities throughout the world, um, as things kind of slow down, I think the regulations will soften. Uh, to be honest, the government here has not made clear right. uh, clear guidelines in terms of like health insurance coming down, et cetera, for those, for example, planning to come in July onwards. Uh, we do think things will be a lot easier um, and not as ro as robust as, as this program, for example. Um, but I don't have 100%, you know, confirmed details from Department of Tourism or the government at this point. They haven't really decided. Um, but we don't anticipate it being quite as, as robust. And really the main reason they're so strict with this right now is just because we really are COVID-free here right now. So for those coming in, we want to make sure that you know, the safety of the community is still there, but also that the safety of those people coming in under this program is also, you know, thought of. And also one thing I, I will say, for example, I, I myself, I'm from Toronto originally, and for anyone who comes to Ireland to live here, we pretty much go through most of these requirements just to live on Ireland. So it's really a normal process for most. It's not like, uh, you know, they're they're picking on, on these, individuals who are trying to come through this program. It is something that is quite normal for those who want to live on island as an expat. Um, and I will say that the beauty of it is, you know, you have this concierge team who's there to help the applicant get through the process, but also everything is very discreet. You know, the, it, it is a lot of personal information that's coming through the government. So that's why they have a specific team who takes care of all, all the paperwork and the process to make sure that the information of these individuals is kept discreet and private as well. Yeah, and again, I think because this is not something that's going to appeal to just such a huge broad audience, I think we can move on a little bit to show oh. more for travelers, but this is a great thing to know. Absolutely. Um, so with that, I'll just kind of uh, dive into our our services through Luxury Cayman Villas. And I will say that, you know, the villa is just one piece picking a stunning villa that, you know, your guests love and they can imagine themselves as spending their time at that property is one piece. But the other piece of it is the transformative experiences. So the memories that they're creating with their family, with their friends who they're traveling with, uh, those are the bits and pieces that really leave a lasting impression on a guest. And with that, I mean, the island itself as a destination, we have plenty of, of experiences, excursions and activities that cater to all, all guests. One of the most famous is Stingray City, um, which is an attraction that most who come to Cayman like to experience at least once. Um, there's of course diving. Some of the best diving on in the Caribbean is right here throughout Grand Cayman. We have over 360 dive sites just around the island of Grand Cayman alone. And 
numerous other excursions as well. There's Turtle Center where you can interact with turtles and have your children hold baby turtles. Even adults love that experience, so it's not just for children. And then having private boat charters, um, going on sunset sails, having a private chef come on board with you, having a bartender come on board with you and your family or your group, and just really having that private experience in a, in a luxurious setting while experiencing everything that Great Cayman has to offer. And of course, with that comes the culinary aspect. And I will say that um, as a destination, we came out and really considers itself the culinary capital of the Caribbean. I'm sure some other destinations may, may not agree with that, but really anywhere you go on island, there's so many wonderful uh, cuisines to choose from. And whether it's like a local sea, seafood shack on the beach to five-star dining at Eric Rupert's restaurant, for example, you have all these options and everything in between. We also really work with some of the best private chefs on island. It's definitely a guest favorite. I will say even through, for normal travel, every single guest books a private chef service at least once. It's great for milestone birthdays, events, um, for those families that, you know, there are families that just want private chef dinner every single night. It's such a delight to come home to your villa after a long day of even just being on a boat or being out on the beach and just having somebody cook this wonderful meal um, and be part of the experience and, and having your whole family there to just experience it as soon as you walk through the door. And what sets Luxury Cayman Villas apart from some of the other villa companies on island is, you know, it's not only the level of luxury that our villas provide um, in terms of the style and the decor, but it's also the guest service. And the guest service is what, what sets us apart. So it's the consistency, it's the quality of service that your guests are getting. It's the security that you have as a travel agent, knowing that, hey, I can hand my guests off to this team. They're all, we're all based on island. Um, we all live here. We know the island. We know the properties in and out. We know what there is to do on every side of the island. So whether you're staying on Seven Mile Beach or you're staying out in Rum Point, where it's a little bit more remote, we know what's close by, where to send your guests. Um, based on their likes and dislikes, our concierge team will always suggest things that would cater to that family and really try to make sure that their experience is what they're looking for and it's unique to them. Again, we really focus on the families as well. Um, so not only do our properties have these amazing bunk rooms, but we make sure that we, we think of the little ones as well because it is their vacation, like as you mentioned, it's their vacation as well. So the, the rooms have child-sized spa ropes, for example, for the kids coming in. There's Xbox and gaming systems in every property, no matter which property you stay at. There's beach toys, baby gear for those coming with, with little kids. Um, so we can have high chairs, pack and plays, uh, baby monitors, things like that set up as well, as well as baby style amenities where you have um, baby shampoo and baby oil and sunscreen and diaper ointment as well for, for, the, for the babies that are traveling with the group. So really we try to think of everybody who is, who is coming down to island and also making sure that the adults are taken care of. So having those universal amenities such as bathrobes and, and slippers and making sure that they're you know, every property has a Keurig machine, an espresso machine, making sure that coffee is available for those coming in. Um, hotel style bath products like Melon and Getz products throughout every property. Complimentary high speed Wi-Fi, satellite television and Apple TV. These are all the little bits and pieces that turn our, our vacation homes are really a turnkey property that you just walk into and everything is taken care of. And how many times do we forget those things when we're traveling? But what's even better is when you know it's going to be there upon your arrival. So you exactly. can just all together, you know, decide to forget, you know, those toiletries because they're just not right. going to be necessary. Absolutely. And, and you know, we have a team here. You have a concierge team from the moment that the booking has been made that will help with arranging anything ahead of time, such as pre-stocking liquor and groceries. Um, if you want snorkel gear at the villa before you get there, we can have it delivered. If you want additional paddle boards, having those things delivered onto, onto the property itself. Um, but also arranging for any other services throughout your stay. There's always somebody that you can call on. We have dedicated property managers as well, and we handle everything from A to Z um, but through our team. Whether it's housekeeping, maintenance, concierge, it's all done through our team. Nothing is, is sourced out. And arranging for private transportation is always essential as well. So it's good yeah. to know that, that the concierge is just a phone call away or a text message away. Absolutely. And we'll handle everything. From our and we do, we do have a couple of questions okay. I wanted to answer. Um, 
what does the 14 day quarantine look like in the villas? I know we had chatted briefly about yeah. that on offline. So maybe you can just give us like a 30 second sure. synopsis of that. And then um, one more question. Absolutely. After that so well. the 14 day quarantine right now, um, once you get in again through the, the government, they actually have the transportation set up. So they will make sure you get to your villa. And before that, our concierge team will be in touch with the guests to make sure if they would like their villa pre-stocked, which most say yes, 100%, to groceries and, and alcohol, they'll have everything pre-stocked at the property. If they want fitness equipment, for example, we can have that on site for them. Um, and anything that they might want to use on the ground, they'll have everything set up with additional linens, um, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, et cetera, just making sure they have access to all of those things for those two weeks, because there is nobody who is allowed to go into the property while they are quarantining. Um, but our team is always available, so via phone, what, even through text message and email, um, our team is there so we can do, we still do a greeting via FaceTime, so once the person has arrived and let themselves in, we have already sent their door codes and everything prior to arrival, so once they've gotten into the villa and had a moment to just kind of take a breath, um, our team will touch base with them and walk them through the villa virtually, helping them, you know, how to use the technology, where certain things are located, but also we're available throughout those two weeks. So we can help them if they if they run out of groceries, for example, we'll order it and make sure it's delivered to their villa. Um, if they need anything additional through their stay, our team can assist with that as well. So they're, they do have all of, um, they have access to all of our services, but remotely. Um, and once public health has tested them and they have, they, they, they're negative, then at that point, our team would go in and do a full house housekeeping um, make sure that the villa is is clean and everything is ready and from then on the guests would basically have a normal stay as they normally would with luxury came in villas where housekeeping is normally included and you can have a private chef come in you can have a massage therapist come into your villa and, and do spa services on site for you yoga on site etc so we can kind of go back to arranging other excursions off property as well and, and really allow the guests to experience the island yeah, and those first two weeks are essentially like a luxury quarantine. Like if you have to quarantine somewhere, this is just a luxurious, amazing way to quarantine. And if they're on um if they're on the beach, if they're a beachfront villa, are they still allowed to use the beach area? Uh by law they're not allowed to go onto onto the beach because it is public property. Um right. all of all of the water in Grand Cayman, the beaches are all public property, but up to the waterline, the guest is able to go. So the beauty of our properties that, is that they're all beachfront. They all, all have wonderful pools and hot tubs that are private. So you can still, your family or your guests can still use those amenities and go into the pool, the hot tub, they have plenty of space to kind of lounge around, but going into the beach during that quarantine is still, um, is still not allowed. But the beauty of staying in a in a villa is, you know, aside from staying in a hotel, you could stay at a wonderful five star hotel on the island. Um, but you're essentially still stuck in a hotel room. And with this, you have all the space and the luxuries of a full home. Um, you're you can still go outside, and even just being outside in the afternoons to watch the sunset can really, you know, help with the quarantine process. So it's definitely a nice way to quarantine. <laughs> And I'll just end off with one other uh, piece is that, you know, a lot of things, as, as many of you in the industry know, are constantly changing. So um, we've really loosened our cancellation policies. We're very flexible, even for those who are booking for a long term stay of, say, three months, four months. You know, if, if for whatever reason they've applied for this application process and something has happened and they can't travel, um, it's fully refundable. Their stay with us is fully refundable. Um, our team has been really flexible when it comes to to these little details because we know things are constantly changing um, in a lot of the large cities as well as number of destinations. But we're also, uh, we've worked on having better long-term rates. So they're lower rates than you would normally get, of course, um, as guests are staying for longer stays and just making sure that our guests are taken care of. And as a travel agent, you can feel comfortable coming to us with your clients um, and we'll take care of them as well as if, you know, there are they are our mutual guests. So um, just making sure that, you know, we're doing what we can to keep yourself happy and your guests happy as well. Thank you so much. That was so much great information. And again, I mean, I think that these villas, of course, right now, this is a great way if you have to quarantine somewhere. It's not ideal to quarantine, of course, but 
it's a great way to go somewhere where you're going to feel mm -hmm. truly safe, especially with families who might have vulnerable family members where they don't really feel safe traveling to a lot of destinations. This mm -hmm. is a really nice compromise where if you have flexibility with time, you can go there. But once the quarantine is over, once vaccines are available and the world is in a better place, hopefully in the coming months, um, in 2021, I think these are phenomenal vacation villas that people can have a great time with their families and friends and groups of yeah. friends. And it's just a great way to experience very private, but very luxurious um, travel. Absolutely. And, and once you've essentially finished that quarantine period, it's as if you're, you know, for, for lack of a better example, it's, it's like you're back in 2019 and you're traveling as you normally would have while staying in the Cayman Islands. So um, there's definitely a beauty in that for sure. Janet, were you talking? I think you were on mute. Oh, oops, I muted myself. I yeah. was going to say, are we going to hear from, I think we're going to hear from Jeff about a few other types of properties and tell us a little bit more. Yeah, happy to do a quick review. Thanks, Sanam. I mean, it's really been interesting to see kind of as you're talking about that, um, we work with a couple of properties in the Maldives, so Neva, and it's very much the same way in the sense that, um, you know, the Maldives have, pretty strict regulations in terms of having to be tested before you can even enter the country. Um, and then uh, the particular hotels that we work with, Sony Vajani and Sony Fushi, have regulations in terms of requiring additional tests um, when you come on island with them. But essentially, once you pass the quarantine time, um, you're living pre-COVID. And um, people, I think, are really yearning for that now more than ever after we've kind of been almost a year now living life like this. So, um, you know, the more kind of destinations that we can find that are like that, I think um, people are really responding well to it. Um, I'm just gonna maybe do a quick review, just um, show a couple other ideas of, of some potential other um, properties for you to think about or other destinations. Um, we'll stick to warm weather since it's uh, cooling down in most of the world right now. Um, I'm just going to go off of our website and just show you a few examples, but um, again, kind of staying within the Caribbean and feel free to have a look on our website. It's jmac.com and your travel advisor can book any of these properties for you. And as I mentioned, we have various additional amenities available, but um, you know, we're fortunate in hindsight um, that we have a portfolio with some properties that are very conducive right now to social distancing, um, a lot of either hotels that don't have indoor corridors or that, you know, mostly are in desk, you know, in a lot of destinations that are staying warm, you know, even into this time of year as I'm kind of stopping on Palm Springs right now, for example, um, some great, um, you know, Yellowstone and, and Moab, Utah. So some great outdoor places where, you know, most of the activity is not in inside a hotel anyway. Um, and I think we're very fortunate to be working with some of these folks um, that really have ended up, for lack of a better term, kind of saved us through this because, um, you know, so many other destinations have been closed off right now. Um, what I'm going to focus on is uh, Villa Marie in St. Bart's. Um, so it's a 21 bungalow and villa property. So again, um, while it's a hotel, each one of the rooms has individual entrance. Um, and I think that really is, you know, again, kind of just um, keeping with the ability to stay as isolated as you like to. Um, I actually happen to be traveling there myself next week. Um, the regulations are a little bit less strict there. Um, in fact, if one of the things that I think um, is worth considering is how you get there, um, as I've discovered in planning this trip, um, because going via San Juan, which you're technically staying in a US territory versus flying through St. Martin, which is often what people will do, um, allows you to avoid um, some restrictions in terms of the type of COVID test that you have to show. Um, so St. Bart's is 
um, has a few different type of COVID tests that are available um, versus St. Martin. If you fly through St. Martin, you're stopping there first and then connecting on a flight to St. Bart's. Um, you have to deal with the regulations that are required of you in entering St. Bart's, I'm sorry, St. Martin, um, which again are a little bit more strict in terms of the type of COVID test that you need to get. Um, and it just makes, you know, a traveling a little bit easier. I know on St. Bart's, if you do um, decide to stay for more than, um, I believe it's seven days, you do have to get an additional test um, after you arrive on the island, in addition to just showing that you're um, COVID negative when, when within 72 hours of your departure to St. Bart's. So um, it's interesting to see how everybody's kind of working these things a little bit differently. Villa Marie is a little bit different too, because I think many people often think of St. Bart's and beachfront property. This is actually up in the hills. Um, so you're overlooking the water, but you do have, um, you know, private pool. Um, many of the villas have their own private plunge pools. Um, very boho chic is kind of the idea behind this. If, if you just want to get um, an idea of where we're talking about, where it's located. So very close to the airport, um, but you're overlooking, you know, some other kind of well-known properties, um, Cheval Blanc, um, for example, if you're familiar with. Um, and one of the things that we're really excited about um, is they are opening a brand new beach club. So this is gonna be exclusive, at least for right now, to guests of Villa Marie. So while you may be up in the hills, um, you do have the opportunity to have that kind of beach experience. Um, and this actually, if, if you're familiar with St. Bart's, this property used to be called Francois Plan uh, Plantation. So um, they actually continue to name the restaurant that, and it's become one of the more popular um, culinary destinations on the island. Um, so I'll show you just a couple photos of this beach club that I was talking about here as well. It's called Gypsy. Um, again, kind of keeping with this whole boho chic theme. It's actually set to open this weekend, so it's not quite open yet, um, but will be now for festive. And again, because they're keeping it exclusive to guests of the property, you know, you're not you're you're at least avoiding um, intermingling, should you wish, um, you know, with a lot of other outside guests. Um, but it really promises to keep with the theme of of the property. Lots of, of course, local ingredients and and local cuisine. Um, very um, beachy uh, cocktails, as you can see here too. Um, so we're really excited to have this. Um, as as a new offering along with your stay at Little Marie, and. Then, yeah. and Bart's in general is just this, I feel like it's a little bit of a shishier island. It's a luxurious island. It's gorgeous. It's not as much of like a party scene as some of the other Caribbean islands, right? It's a little bit more like classy, elegant. That's kind of how I describe it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's kind of like taking the French Riviera and transplanting it into the Caribbean um, in terms of a destination. And it, it, again, it's interesting because for the most part, we're, we're fortunate we work with properties in the Caribbean and whether we're talking about, um, you know, the Cayman Islands, St. Bart's, that are typical, um, St. Lucia even, um, you know, that we work with, that are seen as a little bit more on the kind of upscale, um, you know, they're the more upscale prop, um, islands to visit in the Caribbean. Um, and so, yes, I think it's kind of, I think the best way to compare it is really by saying like like more of a French Riviera experience. Um, you know, there are the beach clubs, but again, they're the beach clubs that you would experience in that part of the world in the Mediterranean. So, um, you know. That's a perfect comparison. I totally agree with that. So, you know, a little, a little French twist in the Caribbean, um, something to think about. Um, another property that I'll show you really quickly too, just to keep with Caribbean, is um, St. Lucia Ladera. Um, and so this is 37 um, rooms. Again, same idea, none of the um, you know entryways or anything like that in this property are indoors, everything's outdoors. Um, it's about 30 to 40 minutes or so from the airport. Um, lush green, you're up in the hills. Um, the, you're right amongst the pitons, which are quite famous. So this hotel was the original property in St. Lucia to kind of have this three walled concept. So you're keeping, I mean, you can't get more open air than that. Um, you've got air flowing through your room at all times. Um, 
and you're so high up, there's really not, um, you know, too much concern in terms of like bugs and mosquitoes or anything like that. And, you know, even if you are concerned, they've got, you know, a nice kind of netting around um, the beds, but it's, it's really phenomenal because each room has its own um, private plunge pool, like you're seeing here. Um, I went a couple of years ago, you know, pre COVID even, and it's like, you don't really want to leave your room anyway. I mean, it's, you've got everything you need there. You can get room service. Um, it's pretty spectacular. They, um, do have a restaurant, which you, you can, um, see right here. It's called Dashni. Um, again, one of the more, um, I think, um, renowned restaurants on the Island, even to locals. Um, and they do kind of have more of a traditional um, local Caribbean flair um, in terms of the type of cuisine that they serve there. Um, so this is another one that I think, you know, St. Lucia, um, in terms of access, you do have to show up again, same kind of idea with a negative COVID test or proof of a negative COVID test 72 hours before arrival. Um, on St. Lucia, they did have a restriction for a bit that you could only go to one hotel per trip, but now they have loosened that. So you could go from one hotel to another, um, so long as you're kind of um, transported. Um, I, I think there's some specific regulations in terms of how you have to transfer from one hotel to another. Um, as you see here, they, um, they have outdoor spa. Um, part of their gym is also outdoors. Um, they've got some great hiking trails, as I'm sure you can imagine being up here in the in the Pitons. And they do have access to a beach club um, that you can go to. It's about eight minutes from the hotel. They have private chair, you know, chairs set up and um, all that as well. So I think this is another really great option to consider, you know, at the moment. Um, some of the other partners that we work with, um, we do have a villa company that we work with. They're called Hosted Villas and they have villas um, throughout the Caribbean and, and many other destinations um, that may be of interest as well that we haven't covered, but, you know, things, um, places such as, you know, Turks and Caicos, um, you know, even in around Mexico, Mexico has been really popular. Um, we've seen lots of interest in Mexico lately. Um, We're selling a lot of Mexico okay. just because of the ease right now of getting there. But, you know, it's interesting. I think all of these different destinations, people say, oh, I want a beach vacation. Well, there's a million ways to take a beach vacation, even in something like the Caribbean, even on one island of the Caribbean. There's so many different types of properties, experiences. Do you want to be on the beach? Do you want to be up in the hills? You know, I love St. Lucia because you have the UNESCO World Heritage Site there. You have the hiking, you have the hills and the mountains versus something like Turks and Caicos, which is flatter, which is really all about the water and the zen and the relaxation. You know, in the Cayman Islands, I think are fun. And, you know, COVID aside, once you get past your 14 day quarantine, I loved visiting Grand Cayman. I thought it was just such a fun island. There's so much spirit and the restaurants are cool. So I think it just really depends on what the person is looking for, right? It's not like, oh, every island, every island has its own flair, its own personality. So it's just an interesting way to kind of think about it. Definitely. I, I mean, and that's where, you, you know, per your point, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm, I think I would say I'm kind of particular in, in my Caribbean choices. There are many, frankly, that I don't really have that much interest in visiting. You know, I personally love Mexico, um, you know, as well, just in terms of a destination, culturally speaking, you know, the cuisine, the people are so friendly, um, you know, so it, I think everybody, you know, I think there's a place for everybody, right? Kind of in and around the, whether we're talking, you know, Caribbean or even um, I just put up here just since we were on the subject of Mexico, um, Los Cabos, we've seen lots of interest, especially people living on the West Coast. You know, if you're in California, it's a couple hour flight, pretty easy. Super popular from Arizona right now. Angie and I were just in Los Cabos a few weeks ago and had a phenomenal yeah. experience. Los yeah. Cabos is like growing up, I feel, even from 10 years yeah. ago. It's just changed dramatically. I feel like the cuisine, the spa, the hotels, like it's just so much more of an upscale vibe. And I had the, I mean, we had the best time there. I've been there twice in the past year and Angie and I just had so much fun. Nice. Yeah, I've heard tons of people going there and a lot, I've, I've not personally gone during COVID, but uh, several of my friends have. And, you know, people were like, okay, you know, what are regulations going to be like down there? And everybody seems to indicate to me that it's more strict than most parts of the US right now. So, um, you know, I don't think there's anything to fear in terms of, you know, COVID going down there. Um, I, I think it's, you know, a very safe destination. They're taking as many precautions, if not more than a lot of places in the US are right now. So, 
um, you know, Nobu Los Cabos, I just pulled up phenomenal. Um, it, you know, I think th this is a really interesting one. If you're familiar with no Nobu Sushi, you know, it's, it's um, very kind of Ryokan chic, but on the other hand, there's a, you know, really a beautiful integration of um, textiles and, and um, elements that really give you a sense of being in Mexico as well. We were mentioning earlier just, you know, other kind of amenities that are available through your travel advisor, um, you know, in booking with JMAC. This is a great example. Um, you get a welcome drink, a $60 breakfast credit per day. It's $30 per person. You get um, a minimum of a $50 spa credit. Um, and you get an upgrade subject to availability, early check-in, late checkout. Um, so some great extra perks um, in booking, you know, property like this through your travel advisor and through JMAC. Um, they have several dining options, not just Nobu. So you don't have to be hanging by the pool eating sushi all day if you don't want to. Um, they've got a great local Mexican restaurant and they also um, have Malibu Farm, which is farm to table, it's delicious. Um, I'm actually in Miami right now and um, just visited their sister property in South Beach, which also has a, a Malibu farm and um, some great cuisine there too. So um, this photo right here is a kids club. So this is a very family friendly resort as well. Um, I was here in January and um, you know, all the adults on, on the trip um, kind of wanted to hang out in the kids club. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> so um, just another great option to think about. And, and um, we do also offer through our partner hosted villas, as I was mentioning, um, some, some villas on the Riviera Maya as well. So um, just to kind of round it out um, in terms of some So many great destinations. And we really, I mean, we gave Jeff a hard job today because we said, okay, you know, he, JMAC has so many amazing properties and we've had guests stay, you know, at prop properties in the U.S. and the mainland and internationally, but we wanted to kind of focus a little bit more on warm weather, beach, Caribbean. I think that that's kind of the mindset, at least that that's the mindset I'm in right now. I want, you know, I'm dreaming of like warm, beautiful water yeah. and, you know, winter's coming up in much of the U.S. It's getting cold. We're hunkering down, but it's a great thing to start thinking about the spring or the summer or even later in the summer for people that might not be comfortable traveling until they've received a vaccine. Hopefully by midsummer, a lot of these destinations will be really ready and open to welcome visitors. We'll, 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 um, we'll do another one together and we can talk about all the fun places we can go this summer in the Mediterranean. I love that. Exactly. <laughs> and just one more question is so fantastic. And I think it's the really, quite frankly, it's almost choosing a second destination. You have the place where you want to go and where you want to travel, but then your collection is so highly vetted. The amenities uh, that you've negotiated with your um, preferred relationships with the properties, it just creates this very unique experience that your hotel becomes a destination within the destination. It does. And, you know, we're fortunate. We've, we've got a great collection. It's obviously not been an easy year for anybody. Um, a good portion of our hotels have hung in there with us. And, um, you know, we're kind of riding through the storm together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, 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 it's a push pull, give take kind of relationship, um, you know, and they've proven to be great partners. And we see the same, you know, with our travel advisors. And, um, you know, we're all kind of, you know, getting creative through this together and, um, you know, finding it's, I think the most inspirational thing about what's happened in COVID and we all have to find silver linings is just to see how so many of our partners have really gotten creative and thought, okay, you know, I was in um, Cape Cod at Chatham Bars in the summer. They had this beautiful side lawn just sitting there on the side of the hotel. Well, you know, when you can only allow 25% occupancy indoor indoors for dining, why not turn that lawn into an outdoor, you know, dinner venue? And they did these huge, um, these beautiful kind of, you know, for, you know, if you were a group with like um, four people or something, they do like a little communal kind of dining outdoor experience. And it's just been fun to see how people have gotten creative and, and you know, are trying to get through this. So, um, you know, I, hopefully some of this sticks in terms of experiences moving forward. Yeah, I think it's definitely made people reconsider how they want to spend their time. And I think, you know, whether people are traveling now or they're not comfortable, they want to travel later. I think that some of those themes are going to stay with us. I, I don't think any of us 
are jumping to get back to life 100% the way it was before COVID. I think we've enjoyed slowing down a little bit, taking things in. You know, the slow food movement was starting before COVID. Now we feel, I feel like we might have like the slower travel movement, which I'm always a big fan of. I agree. I think we were so, you know, there's this emphasis on like seeing all these places and, you know, but you don't necessarily always take the time to enjoy it when you're hopping around, you know, from place to place. And there's, I mean, even personally, I haven't spent so much time at home in, you know, probably 10 years. Um, but it's just nice to like enjoy the place that you live and, you know, re-explore, you know, I, I was living in New York City for 10 years and all these places that I never bothered to visit because I was never home, you know? So I think it's, um, it, it has been a good a good time for us to all kind of reassess a little bit and it will definitely show through in how we travel moving forward, I agree. Well, thank you guys, both of you so, so much. We did have one other question for Luxury Cayman Villas, which was what is the percentage of discount for the current villas under quarantine? I'm assuming that's gonna vary by villa. Yes, so it, um, well, by Villa, it's it's essentially a standard discount across the board, but the discounts go deeper depending on the length of stay. So right now, if someone's doing a quarantine stay, it's approximately 30% um, off what our normal rates would have been for a quarantine stay. If they're staying um, what uh, two months or longer, then it's a much deeper discount. If they're staying six months or longer, it's a much deeper discount. And quite honestly, we're flexible. So if you have somebody, they're not rigid prices, we're willing to work with agents and guests from villa to villa, depending on dates and, and what, when they're coming down. And we're really trying to make sure that, you know, we can get people to come in to Ireland and experience it. So we are quite flexible, even if, if that doesn't work with their budget, we'll find something Hopefully that, that answers your question, Kim. Well, thank you guys so much. We loved having you. This was so educational and inspirational. And we're all, we're dreaming of, I mean, I'm dreaming every day of when we can get back to truly traveling and exploring the world the way we once took for granted. And hopefully we never take it for granted again. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys. We'll definitely have you back, Jeff, because I think, you know, depending on where you live, we stayed at your partner hotel, the Sorrel River Ranch in Moab. Yeah. And it was in July and, and we, you know, drove because at that point we weren't flying or, or comfortable flying as often. So I think, you know, the properties that you have in the U.S., I think right now it's really we all need to start planning travel, whether we're ready or not, because the inspiration of just you know, researching all these different options. Yeah. So I, I highly encourage people to reach out to us. If you don't know what travel uh, looks like, if you don't know what trip would really appeal to you and what destination, I mean, that's why we work closely with our partners to, to really understand what recommendations are best for each traveler. I mean, Sanam's a perfect example of, I mean, you know, with all the, the regulations and protocol in place, I mean, what a safe destination to travel to really. So mm -hmm. you can do it safely. Right, you get there and then, you know, you don't have to be stressing because you know that everyone there has quarantined. So it really elevates the level of safety and the ability to sort of put this pandemic aside while you're on your vacation. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Again, ladies, appreciate it. Thanks everyone for joining us. Take care.